Chapter 4 is all about graphing. The first section has a lot of basics in it, but there's going to be quite a bit to it. So first off, the horizontal line here is the x-axis. The vertical line is the y-axis. Whenever you plot or write down the point, it has to be x, comma, y. x, which is the horizontal, always goes first, and then the y, which is the vertical, is always second. Also, you have to put the parentheses around it for it to be the ordered pair. The next thing on the graph are the quadrants. So we have one, two, three, and four. And to help remember, one, x is positive, y is positive. In two, x is negative, y is positive. In three, x is negative, y is negative. In four, x is positive, y is negative. It always has to be that way. Again, though, x and then y whenever you're plotting things. So if we say we have any point, let's say that we have our graph. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. If we say that we have a point right here, we've gone zero along the x-axis. So that has to go first and we've gone up, which is positive, for 3. This point is on the y-axis. If we had something right here in um, quadrant 1, we would say first that it went over 1, 2, 3, so positive 3, and it went up a positive 1. If we had something right here, this is in the fourth quadrant, so we went over positive 2, and we went down 1, so we're going to say negative 1. Let's say we have something right here. So first, we do how far we went horizontally, so we went backwards 2, so negative 2, and we also went down 1, 2, 3, so negative 3. And then let's say we have one right here. We went backwards 1 and up 1. Again, I'm going to stress x goes first, y goes second. Then let's say that we have one here that's just on the x-axis. So we went backwards, negative 2. How many did we go up or down? 0. So it's going to be a 0 in the second part of the ordered pair. You have to do these in the right order of x comma y always x first y second a big mistake that people make especially on ones where it's just asking you about points is putting them backwards okay so you're gonna get a lot of questions that say something like 1x plus 2y equals 3 and it's gonna ask you is negative 1 comma 2 a solution is 2 comma 1.5 a solution and 4 comma negative 0.5 are these solutions what you're gonna do is plug the first number in for X the second number in for Y solve that and see if you get 3 so I'll do this first one plug in a negative 1 1 times negative 1 is negative 1 plus Plug in the 2 for y. 2 times 2 is 4. And negative 1 plus 4 does equal 3. So the answer will be yes. For this one, we're going to say 2 goes in for x. So that's going to be 2 plus 2 times 1.5 <coughs> is going to be 3. That equals 5. So the answer is no, because it doesn't equal 3. And then let's say this one, 4 comma negative 0.5. So 1 times 4 is 4. And 2 times negative 0.5 is negative 1. 4 minus 1 equals 3. So the answer will be yes.
Then, let's say that we have 6x equals 3y plus 2. And they're going to give you negative 4 for the x. They're going to give you 40 over 3 for y. And they're going to give you 8 for x. And you have to find whatever's missing. So we're going to substitute whatever we're given in for the variable that it corresponds to. So here we're going to put negative 4 in for x. So 6 times negative 4 equals 3y plus 2. Now we have to solve for y. So we're doing what we did in the previous chapters. 6 times negative 4 is negative 24 equals 3y plus 2. Subtract 2. We get negative 26 equals 3y. Divide both sides by 3. And y equals negative 26 over 3. So our answer here will be negative 26 over 3 for y. Then we're going to put the negative or we're going to put 40 over 3 in for y. So let me clear the space here. And we're going to have 6x equals 3 times 40 over 3 plus 2. Solve for x this time. 6x equals 3 divided by 3 is 1 times 40. So 40 plus 2. Add the 40 and 2. We get 42 equals 6x. Divide both sides by 6. And we're going to get that x equals 7. So our answer here will be 7. Now, we're going to see what happens when we put 8 in for x. And again, I'm going to stress this. We have to, it's always going to be x comma y. So if you have whatever's first in the ordered pair, you're going to put it in for x. If you have what's second, you're going to put it in for y. This is a common mistake, which is why I'm stressing it. So we're going to put the 8 for the x. So 6 times 8 equals 3y plus 2. Multiply 6 times 8, we get 48 equals 3y plus 2. Subtract 2, we're going to get 46 equals 3y. Divide both sides by 3, y equals 46 over 3. So our answer here is 46 over 3 for y. Okay, so you're going to have a few that are like that. Um, also, if you ever get um, f of x equals something, f of x is basically this way of writing it is the same as saying y equals that same thing. f of x just means what will you get if you put in x for, um, or whatever, whatever you put in for x, this will be the answer of that x. And... Okay, for some of these, uh, it's easier to show you on my open math. Um, hopefully, you'll be able to see the screen well enough. Uh, you're going to get a question like this. Find three different integer solutions to the equation y equals negative 1 over 2 times x. When it says integer solutions, that means both the x and the y have to be integers. So if you have a fraction like this, the easiest ones to use, if you put a zero, 
Zero times anything is zero. So we can put zero in for x. Also, for a fraction, just put whatever this number is in the denominator. So put a two. And then you could put a negative two um, because that will cancel it and turn it into an integer or any multiple of two. I'm gonna put a negative two just because that is, those are some of the easiest numbers to put in. So now we need to solve. If we put a zero in for x, zero times negative one half is zero. If we put a two in for x, negative one half times two is negative one. And then if we put a negative 2 in for x, negative 1 half times negative 2 is going to be a positive 1. So now it's asking to graph. And what we're going to do is use this drawing tool. Now we, we found three points. Whenever we're graphing with my open math, you can only use two of those points. If you try to put all three of them, it will mark you wrong. So only use two of them, except for in some assignments where it says to find um, points and you graph the points themselves and then draw a line through them. Um, it's going to say, it's going to give you one point. It's going to tell you to find the one to the right and one to the left and graph them all or plot them all. So you'll just graph, plot those points but and then draw the graph. But when you're just drawing a graph, do not try to use more than two points or it will mark you wrong. So then what you're gonna do, you click on the line tool here and you go to one of the points. So I'm gonna go to zero comma zero first. And zero comma zero is right here. And you have to get right on the point. Okay, so then I clicked it, the mouse once. So as you see, now I can click now it gives me a line, and I just need to click on another point. So here I'm gonna to go to two comma negative one. So first, two is the X, so I'm gonna go over two, and then down one. And I'm gonna hit the point again, or hit the mouse button again. I'll hit submit, and it shows that I got all of this correct. So that's what you're gonna do there. You're gonna do the same thing here, if it says that x equals negative 3, that means x will always equal negative 3, and then you can just put any number in for here. And so x negative 3, just find two points along this um, line here. For something like this one, put in um, numbers where you will get a, an integer for everything. Zeros will almost always work, um, so I suggest those. Here, we have 3x minus 5y equals negative 10. So if we put a number in for y here, we're gonna get 10, let's say we put a zero. We're gonna get negative 10 divided by 3x. That's not going to be an integer. So what I recommend here is if you put a zero in for x, then you can get negative 5y equals negative 10. That will give a um, an integer. And then try to get something where you will get an integer. So you're going to have to play around with this to find ones that will work. Um, if you were to put a 5 in for x and a negative 5, that will work because you're going to divide by a factor of five. If you put um, certain numbers in for y, that will make that when you add it over, it will be divisible by three. That will work. Um, but those you just have to play with. Then you're going to be given um, something like this, where it gives you a line and you have to find the points and then do the equation. So finding the points is easy. 
So the first one, it says for x is zero, you just look up here, x is zero at 16. So we're gonna put a 16 right here. And then when x is one, we go up to one and it looks like it's at 12. So we're gonna put a 12. When x is three, Oh no, when x is two, um, we're gonna get eight. When x is three, we're gonna get four. And when x is four, we have that y is zero. So now we have to write the equation. We're gonna write the equation y equals first. So y equals. And then we have to see what the rate of change is. So for every one X, how much did Y change? So when it went from zero to one, we went down four, so that's negative four. Then we went from one to two, we went from 12 to eight, so that's also negative four. So our rate of change here is negative four. So we're gonna put y equals negative four, and then we're gonna put x, and then we're gonna put whatever our starting point was. So our starting point here was 16. So we're gonna say plus 16. So basically, and there's a video here that you can will help you. Watch this video because he explains it fairly well. So what, what, the, what we're doing here is y equals the rate of change and the rate of change here is when we're moving 1x how much does y change and it changes a negative 4 so we're going to put y equals negative 4 and it's times x and then plus whatever our initial was and our initial is where x is 0 and x is 0 is at a positive 16 here so we hit submit and we got all of that right. Um, then here is gonna be, it says, Megan is always losing her tennis balls. At the beginning of the tennis season, she has 29 tennis balls and she loses two each week. So at the very beginning, she has 29. So we're going to put a 29 for the beginning. And then she loses 2. So that means that she's subtracting 2. So we're going to say 29 minus 2 is 27. And then minus 2 is 25. And then minus 2 is 23. And then minus 2 is 21. And then minus 2 is 19. Now to graph this, again only use two of the points. It will mark you wrong if you try to put all of them in or even if you try to put three of them. So I'm just gonna use the first one and the second one. So when X is zero, Y is 29. So I'm gonna put my point right here. And then when y, X is one, Y is 27. So I'm gonna go over one and down two. And there, there's my graph. Now it does, if you go over each one, you're gonna see that it is corresponding with all the points that we made. So now our equation here is gonna be y equals, and we went down two every time. So negative two x, and we started at 29. So I'm gonna say plus 29. And that's how you're gonna do those ones. And there are a few of them. So, that is section one.